Okay, so what we've got here is a concave mirror. This has also worked with a convex mirror with a focal point on the other side. On it, I've marked the radius of curvature, C. So the distance from C to the mirror is equal to R. So this distance here is R, where R is that radius. What I've drawn on is two light rays. So there's one hitting the mirror at one. So it's coming in parallel to the principal axis. And if it comes in parallel to the principal axis, then we know that it is reflected through the focus because that's how we defined the focus. And another ray which is coming in along the principal axis. And then because it's traveling along the principal axis, it's reflected back directly along the principal axis. So let's mark on what we know. We can call this angle of incidence, which is the angle between the normal and the incoming ray at one theta. Now we know from reflection that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. So what I've drawn here is the normal at point one. Now the normal goes through the center of curvature because whenever you draw a line from the center of a circle, to the radius of the circle, it meets at 90 degrees. So that's 90 degrees in there. And this angle is theta because the angle of incidence is the same as the angle of reflection. Now, another light angle which is theta is this angle in here. And that's because this incoming ray is parallel to the principal axis. So this line and this line are parallel. And these two angles are then alternate angles on parallel lines. So those two are equal. So now if we look at this triangle between C, which is our center of curvature, F, our focus, and this point one here, we've got two angles which are both theta. So this is an isosceles triangle, and this side and this side are going to have equal lengths. So now what we can do is draw a perpendicular bisector through this triangle here. So these angles here are both 90 degrees, and we know that these two triangles are both identical. That's theta, that's theta, these have the same lengths. And so because the distance between the center of curvature and one is just the radius, this length here is radius on two, and this length along here is the radius on two as well. Now, what we're trying to work out is how far is this focal length from this mirror here. To do that, what we can look at is this triangle here. Let's go around the triangle in red. So we're looking at this triangle now. And for that triangle, so cos theta is equal to r over 2, the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is cf. And so rearranging this, we can see that cf is equal to r over 2 divided by cos theta. Now, we're only going to consider the limit where theta is small. So if theta is small, then we've got cos theta is approximately equal to 1, which tells us that Cf is approximately equal to R on 2. Okay, now this isn't actually going to work for everything. This only works for small for small thetas. So you get small thetas when we don't go too far from the principal axis. So what we're trying to work out is the distance f from here. We know that from c to the mirror is r and from c to f is r on 2. So that tells us that the length to f is equal to r minus r on 2. So that's equal to r on 2. So as long as we're not too far from the principal axis, then the focal length is half the radius of curvature of the lens. That's what we've just shown.